Hi guys, so today we're going to look at the anatomy of a para parabola. Um, you've kind of gotten exposed to different types of functions, so let's take a look at what a parabola looks like. So a parabola is the graph shape that comes out of the formula that anything involving an x squared, x squared would be the highest exponent in there. So all we really need to do to get started to figure it out is we put negative 4 into x squared, and so we do y equal to negative 4 squared. So notice the negative 4 is in brackets. That means we're squaring the negative as well as the 4, which means the result is positive 16 because a negative times a negative is positive. Doing something similar for y is equal to negative 3 squared, we get positive 9. y is equal to negative 2 squared, we get positive 4. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 0 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 4 is 16. So notice we have a pattern that is going down and then back up again. You'll also notice that we have kind of a, um, starting from the zero in the middle, that's the vertex, we kind of have the symmetry going up. If we go to the left by one, we go up by one. We go to the right by one, we go up by one. We go to the left by one more, we go up by another three, right, because that's plus three. And for, we go out by another one, we go from 4 to 9, so that's plus 5. We go out by another one from 9 to 16, we go up by 7. So we can actually see a pattern. We're going up by 1, then 3, then 5, then 7. And if we go the other way, to the right, by 1, that's the x's are going up now. We go up by 1, out by another one, we go up by another 3. Out by another one, we go up by another five, and then another seven. So this is called the step pattern, where we start at the vertex, and as we step outwards from the vertex, we're actually going up by the same amount on either side, and the, how much we're going up by is the next odd number. So we can graph each point individually, or we can use the step pattern. So here's the vertex, go out one, up one, out one, up one, or in other words, we're graphing one, one, and negative one, one, we can graph 1, 4, or we can go out by 1, up by 1, 2, 3. Same thing on the other side, 1, 2, 3. Or that's the point, negative 2, positive 4. And then 3, positive 9, that's 9. And the same thing on the other side. And then we can go to 4, 16. That's 16. And this is 16 on the other side as well. Okay, and so then we just draw a nice smooth line through the whole thing right to the edge of the graph. We put an arrow on the edge and we should label our graph y equals x squared. We should also be labeling our axes, so x and y. And let's look at the features now. So the vertex is this bottom point. It's unique. It's directly in the center. There's a little mirror line see that runs down the middle here which means if we were to lay a mirror on this line the left it would look like the full graph still even though the right side would be blocked it would reflect the left side and it would look the same or vice versa so the vertex point is zero zero the axis of symmetry is what i just told you about the line that goes through here and the equation of that line is x is equal to zero so it goes right through the line the value x is zero <clears throat> The, uh, is it a max or a min? Well, we see here, reading from left to right, it goes down, 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 hits the bottom, then goes back up again. So the bottom value is the y value of the vertex, which is so means it's a minimum, it's a min of y equals zero. Its x-intercept this time just so happens to be the same as the uh, vertex. That doesn't always happen. So this is the x-intercept is x equals zero. It opens up, like a U, domain. There's an E there because this is from a French immersion handout. Uh, so it's domain or something like that. But domain, without the E, still the same, is X is a real number in these little curly brackets. You can see that there. And the range, well, we just have to say, well, Y is a real number such that, the vertical line, y is going to be greater than or equal to zero, that min value we talked about a minute ago. Okay, so let's try one or two examples. 
and I'm going to have a second video showing you how to use um, graphing technology to do this. So we're going to state the vertex, the direction of opening, the x-intercepts, the maximum value of the of y, and the x value when it occurs for each parabola. So looking here, the vertex is this mirror point down here, which is the point, the vertex is going to be at the point 0, negative 4. Um, the, it's going to have a min value, so min of, well, the y value here, which is y equals negative 4, um, when x is equal to 0. And the vertex direction of opening, and it opens up. So let's state that also. Opens up. Okay, I'll do one of these other ones. You guys can fill in the blanks on the rest. Um, but here is another one. Um, oh, did I skip the x-intercepts? I did, I did. The x-intercepts. X int is going to be zero. Um, not zero. The x-ints are right here and right here. So that's going to be two, zero, and negative two, zero. Okay, I'm choosing this one over here, this number part D, because... Um, I want to show you one that's opening down. And we can see here it's got a vertex um, right here, which is minus 5, positive 2. And then we've got a max value. See how it goes up? It's that top value and then goes back down again. Again, we read graphs from left to right. So we have a max value of y equals 2 max of y equals 2 when x equals negative 5. It opens down. That's its direction of opening. And its x-intercepts are here at minus 7 and minus 3. The x-ints are, um, what am I writing here? Minus 7, 0, and minus three, zero. What's interesting is here's the axis of symmetry. There it is. And you'll notice our x-intercepts are the same distance away. They're both two units in either direction away from the axis of symmetry. So that's actually why they call it that, the axis of symmetry, because again, everything's mirrored across it. Okay, so stay tuned for the next video that will show you how to use graphing to find these solutions on more complicated parabolas.